In this video, we're going to look at radioactive dating in rocks and minerals. So just like with carbon dating, um, where we have carbon-14 and carbon-12 with carbon-14 decaying, we also have radioactive isotopes that are in um, rocks and minerals, but these isotopes tend to have much longer half-lives uh, than carbon-14. So uh, for example, uranium has a half-life that's on the order of billions of years. So you can actually tell how old um, the Earth is, for example, from radioactive isotope um, dating of the uranium content in the planet. So uh, we can also look at other uh, isotopes. So what, one common example is uh, potassium-40, which uh, you can find in rocks and minerals and also in bananas. It gives, uh, the potassium in banana gives it its radio, uh, gives a little bit of radioactivity to a banana. So potassium-40 decomposes into argon um, by a beta decay. And um, this gives us, oh no, I'm sorry, by a positron emission. And this gives us uh, argon from the potassium. So uh, this would be uh, argon, this would be potassium-40 dating. And then also U-238 decomposes into lead 206, which is another useful way for dating. Now, one important thing to understand with uh, radioactive dating in rocks and minerals is when the uranium decomposes um, from uranium-238 to lead 206, there is going to be a mixture. So initially, at time zero, we have 100% uranium-238. As time goes on, we're going to get a mixture of two things. At time other than zero, we're going to get some uranium-238 plus some lead-206. So the way to think of it is, is uh, in terms of numbers of atoms, at any given time, all of the atoms of uranium-238 and lead-206 are going to add up to be the original number of atoms of the uranium-238. So uh, what you can do is you can say, well, the amount of uranium-238 that's left um, at time t divided by the U-238 at time t plus the lead-206 that's there, this is going to give you your total. So this is going to be equal to the number of atoms at time t divided by the total number of atoms that there was originally. Uh, and that's because when the uranium decomposes, it turns into lead. So you get a mixture of uranium lead. And we can actually work back using conservation of mass to say that the combination of those two elements is going to give us the original number of atoms that were in the sample. OK, so this is an example where we can do some radioactive dating with rocks and minerals. So this one says, calculate the age of a meteorite in years if it contains 0.7 grams of U-238 and 0.2 grams of lead-206. Assume that the lead-206 is present strictly from the decay of U-238. The T1 half for U-238 is 4.5 times 10 to the 9 years. Okay, so we have a couple of things we have to do in this problem. So if we want to figure out the age, then what we need to do is in inevitably we need to have the equation uh, ln of the number of atoms uh, at time t divided by the number of atoms at time zero is going to equal minus k t. So to get the k, we need to use the half-life. So we can do that kind of quickly. We can say that k is going to equal the ln of 2 over t1 half, which is going to equal the ln of 2 over 4.5 times 10 to the ninth years. So k for this is going to be 1.54 times 10 to the minus 10 uh, years to the minus 1. So now we have k for this equation. Now the, th the problem is, is what we need now is we need to get the ratio of the number of atoms at time t to the number of atoms at 0. So it gives us two numbers. It gives us 0.7 grams of U-238 and 0.2 grams of lead-206. So if you add up all of those atoms, that's going to be the original number of atoms that were in the sample. So we have to go back and we have to figure that out. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to calculate the number of moles of each of those. So we're going to get um, the number of moles of U-238, which is 0 0.7 grams. And then to get the number of moles, we're going to divide by the molecular weight, which is 238 grams for every one mole. 
And so this is going to give us 2.94 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of the uranium-238. Okay, and then we have 0.2 grams of the lead-206, which is 9.71, oh, I'm sorry, which is 206 uh, grams per mole for every one mole. So this is going to give us 9.71 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of the lead 206. So if we want to get our fraction, what we have to do when we're plugging in is we have to do the following. So our number of atoms at time t is going to be the number of uranium atoms that are left at the sample time. So that's 2.94 times 10 to the minus third moles of the lead two oh of the uranium 238. That's the number of, of radioactive atoms left. Then we have the total number, which is going to be the number of U238 plus the number of lead 206. So we get 2.94 times 10 to the minus 3 moles plus 9.71 times 10 to the minus 4 moles on the bottom. Now just remember, that is because for every one U238 that breaks down, it gives us one lead 206. So the stoichiometry is one to one. So the reason why we can say in the bottom part is that we can say that what we have left in terms of U238 plus what we have of the, the lead 206 is going to be the original amount of the lead 238. And then we can say, well, this is going to equal 1.54 times 10 to the minus 10 years to the minus 1 times T. And there's a minus sign in there. So if we solve this all out, where we uh, take the natural log of 2.94 times 10 to the minus 3rd divided by the sum of those two numbers, 2.94 times 10 to the minus 3rd plus 9.71 times 10 to the minus 4, then we divide by negative 1.54 times 10 to the minus 10, we get a t value equal to 1.84 times 10 to the ninth years. So that's how you solve that problem. So the key thing with doing these uh, mineral rocks and mineral problems is understanding that um, whatever it breaks down into, the sum of the number of atoms is going to give you back what the original amount was. Okay, and then it says Krypton-85 has a half-life of 10.76 years. Calculate the fraction left after 25 years. So again, here we have a problem where we have ln of n over time t over n0 is going to equal minus kt. So we got to get the k, so the k is going to equal uh, the ln of 2 over t1 half, which in this case is going to be the ln of 2 over uh, 10.75 years, or 10.76 years. Which is going to give us uh, 0 0.0644 years to the minus 1 is our k. So if we want to get the fraction, we can plug in for, uh, we can rearrange this a little bit where we can say, well, okay, so if we take the, uh, if we put both sides to an exponent, we can get n over t over n over 0, which is a ratio we're looking for, is equal to e to the minus kt. And then so we can say that that ratio is going to equal e to the minus 0 0.0644 years to the minus 1 times 25 years, which is going to equal uh, 0 0.2 uh, as our fraction. So the fraction of the number of um, atoms of Krypton-85 divided by the original number of atoms is going to be 0 0.2. So we're going to have 20% 20 20 left after 10.76 years.